Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So the Overwatch stress test weekend is live and with the Legion beta not being a thing, I've done the only sane thing, neck bearded the shit out of it. These are my impressions so far. First of all, I come from this with a perspective of enjoying FPSs of just about every variety. Counter-Strike, TF2, Halo, Quake, Battlefield, I enjoy the whole lot of them and I even enjoy the odd MOBA, primarily Smite. So given what I like, I think in many ways Overwatch is a game that was always going to come off pretty well for me. But first of all, let's just get some technical stuff out of the way. So the game looks pretty beautiful and it runs maxed at 4K 60fps on 980 SLIs. The options menu overall is okay, but being in beta I don't really mind that. What I want to communicate though is how tight the game feels from a technical level. It feels very, very responsive. If you've ever played Battlefield 4 and then CSGO, you'll know what it feels like to move from something that feels covered in Vaseline and, uh, you know, then play something that's really, really tight and well controlled like Counter-Strike. Given their other games and their lack of FPS experience, I was worried Blizzard would have sort of fucked up parts of this game on an engine level. That isn't the case and it feels fantastic. Onto the gameplay. So, the actual gameplay of Overwatch is based around objective maps and two teams. You select from one of 21 very diverse heroes, which I think is a part of the game's great strength. There is probably something here for every single playstyle. Now, I've gravitated towards the likes of Tracer, McCree, Widowmaker, and Hanzo, but for an example, if you're an experienced Smite player, then you'll probably feel at home with somebody like Reinhardt. The gameplay variation is fantastic, with there being so many different combinations of distinct heroes. It essentially means that every single match offers a different challenge and a different overall setup. So each hero has a few different abilities. Generally, there is stuff with a short cooldown and then an ultimate with a really long cooldown that charges up during the fight. And this is where the absolute, like, definite MOBA inspiration is in this game. And the thing is, it completely works. So the regular abilities very much inform the playstyle of the hero and mastery of using them in addition to your regular pointing and shooting will lead to great success. You need to fully utilize your entire toolkit. If you run into this and just shoot your gun, you're not going to do as well. But if, for an example, you're a tracer who's always blinking to try to throw their opponent off balance and then rewinding to confuse them even more, you're going to beat a tracer who just plays it like a regular F FPS and shoots and reloads and pops out of cover and shoots and reloads. Now, the ultimate abilities really do range in power um, and they absolutely change the course of an engagement provided they are used correctly. I'll give you a few examples here. So Tracer's ult is a sticky grenade. She can blink to an opponent, stick them, and then rewind back to safety. Which is pretty damn cool. Now, if you stick a grenade to a key opponent like a tank or a healer, you're going to massively help your team. Widowmaker will allow your team to see through walls. I think that's a pretty clear advantage. Reinhardt can stun enemies in a big cone, which could crush an enemy's defense or attack. Zenyatta does a big AoE heal, which is perfect for bolstering a failing defense. Mercy can mass res dead allies. McCree can even do a slow attack that, if locked on for long enough, can kill multiple enemies in rapid succession. These can change the course of a fight in a really satisfying way. And these abilities and their extreme power was actually one of my concerns. I thought it might make matches a bit of a clusterfuck. That hasn't been the case though. Most of them, especially the super powerful ones, are telegraphed to the point where you are going to be able to react to them. People might look at McCree and think his ultimate is overpowered, but in actuality, it's very easy to dodge provided you're not totally out in the open. The prevalence of other abilities also just gives the gameplay a very frantic pace to the classes, and this gameplay loop has never failed to hold my attention. It, it's just so gripping in a way which is really great. And one upshot of all these MOBA elements is the game is really frantic. There's loads of abilities going on and lots of stuff. There's a lot of visual noise and clutter. None of it feels too excessive or excess though. Now there's a lot of ha stuff happening, especially in the team fights and reacting perfectly to everything is quite hard. And I feel like a good bit of the skill in this game will be in deciphering just what the balls is going on, especially in a big close range clusterfuck. When applied to a one-on-one -on -one scenario, this game kind of transcends what a lot of what an FPS would offer. Rather than two people doing a bit of dodging and shooting, you're actively using your abilities to outwit your opponent, and uh, you're also keeping track of their ability usage, meaning that it's a very satisfying combat experience. Tracer versus Tracer duels can just be completely mind-bending too, it's really fun. 
The mix of weapons is also fantastic. The, um, for an example, McCree and Hanzo are very precise, and they will require the traditional FPS skill set. But then there's heroes like Winston, who don't require much precision at all with his Tesla gun auto firing in a short range cone. Overall, this means that literally anyone can pick up Overwatch and be able to play a hero decently. You can also swap heroes in and out mid match. I think this is brilliant, and it's a recognition that this is in many ways more of a shooter than a MOBA, kind of. Um, with HOTS existing, I think a lot of people expected Overwatch to follow that way of doing things where it's just fixed heroes, and I'm glad that Overwatch doesn't. Reacting to enemy picks is a very important part of the overall metagame, and I think it adds to the game balance too. Not every hero should be balanced against every other hero, and being able to counter pick your enemy's comp mid-match is vital to making sure all of that works out nicely. I think it is a very good design decision, despite the fact there has been a little bit of, I don't want to say controversy, but there's been a lot of discussion about it. As far as game modes go, there are the traditional kind of ones. There's Payload, which is ripped from Team Fortress 2, and then Hold the Objective. Uh, there's an attacking team and a defending team on both. In Payload, the attackers have to escort a bomb to a point of the enemy's base, and in the Hold uh, the Objectives one, there's two points in the map which the defenders have to defend. If you lose the first one, then you fall back to the last one. It's all pretty standard, and the game modes are one area where Overwatch does not really innovate at all. What I will say is that the hero design has a transformative effect on those game modes, making them feel quite fresh. I would really like Blizzard to attempt to come up with uh, some of their own game modes, though. The maps themselves are pretty good. None stand out as being, like, you know, terrible, annoying maps. They allow for lots of movement options, there's good verticality. Lines of sight seem very well handled as well, though it really is too early for uh, me to say that for certain. Once you finish a match, they've got this really cool thing where they play some of that great Overwatch music and do a montage of the best play. Day of the game. Right now, that does too much in terms of uh, only really rewarding characters that get loads of kills, but after that, they bring up kind of commendations for the match, which could include most damage blocked, most healing. So overall, they're onto a good thing there, they just need to polish it up some more. Overall, I think this really comes together to create extremely fun matches where team play is a very big element. The game does support team uh, play very well, even having very robust VoIP from the get-go character barks for, you know, needing help to uh, communicate are actually pretty good and they facilitate support roles, so if a character's at low health, they'll shout, you know, oh no, I'm at low health. That's good for kind of just via your ears picking up roughly what's going on. Um, that's something a lot of games do, obviously, it's just that it's done quite competently here. The timings between everyone's abilities mean that you get, uh, well, once you get used to the game, you can naturally work together. This is especially true of the ultimate abilities. An example, and this is something I did just before recording this video, we didn't win because of this play. It did get play of the match, though, which was fun, but we were trying to break a siege, so I blinked in with Tracer. I used my ult to kill either one or both of their tanks, I forget exactly. I then rewinded back, jumped in, and that play took their tanks out and allowed my team to advance. Another example, Reinhardt can do a stun, allowing someone like Farah to do a large AoE. Um, you know, clutch ultras overall are an extremely important part of how you play the objective, and I think they have a transformative effect on those game types. As an example, doing a payload in, um, in Team Fortress 2 is very different to a payload in Overwatch, because in Overwatch, you can, you know, do Hanzo and put your flying dragon ult, go, like, you know, right through the payload, um, to block the enemy. There's a lot more gameplay going on there that I think creates um, almost a more interesting mind game than in a lot of FPSs with similar modes. Overall, I think they create some very fantastic moments that are usually only reserved for the kind of high points of a MOBA game where, you know, somebody does an ult and gets a pentakill. You can get those highs in Overwatch, but unlike a MOBA game, you've got very, very high quality fun action in between. Often in a MOBA, you know, you have a big burst of action and then you're chilled out for a while, then you're farming or something like that. No, in this, the chill out time, the farming time, that's you playing a really, really high quality FPS. Overall, this game's loop just holds your attention very, very well. 
Currently, there's not a massive amount else to the game. It's pretty simple. You just queue up for a match, play that match, and then repeat. I suppose my bottom line overall here is that the very important thing of gameplay is what they do well. This game is fun to play. It caters to many different play styles, and it allows for lots of tactical depth. I can see Overwatch with a team full of friends being an extremely fun experience. Now, there are some things that aren't perfect. They need to fix up the UI, allow for more customization to it, maybe have a server browser for clan-based stuff, built-in tournaments, loads of other things, but this is already beta, and the primary concern of this video is whether the gameplay is up to snuff. Gameplay is the core of any game, and as far as I'm concerned, Overwatch has a stupendously strong core. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.